So we'll begin with a round of general questions, beginning with Eileen Brady. And the first question for the three candidates on stage is, what makes you the best candidate to protect Portland's environment? Eileen Brady. Okay. We're almost there. I'll, I'll take this moment to just give a shout out to Cameron Witten, who's also running for mayor. He's a Green Party and Progressive Party endorsed candidate. One minute. Portland's environment, public health, and natural resources are what draw people here. We've continued to innovate around ways to protect our natural resources, both for our human benefit and for nature's inherent value. I'm in good company on this stage because I know my opponents agree that the natural environment of one, is one of Portland's most important assets. However, I would argue that my track record of working with ecological and human health is unmatched in the candidates for mayor. I have tirelessly worked for environmental sustainability, resilience, social responsibility, and equity. As human resources director at Nature's and co-founder of New Seasons Market, I help build and grow organizations that serve as landmark neighborhood anchors, create thousands of jobs, and have helped transition thousands of acres of agriculture to sustainable agriculture. As vice president of EcoTrust, I help drive innovation in the food system. As vice, as actually chair of Zanger Farm, I help build a, a children's field trip destination program that now allows 5,000 children a year to understand watershed health and where their food comes from. As vice chair of the Oregon Health Fund Board, I brought together business, labor, and activists to pass a bill that, help, that today provides health care to over 94,000 children in Oregon. I'm proud of these accomplishments because they are all tangible proof that holistic thinking can integrate jobs, the environment, and social justice. We're all in the environmental community. What we share as a core competency is the ability to think holistically. And if you think holistically, you know that something's wrong. You know we have to improve jobs and equity in our community. I look forward to the conversation tonight. Charlie Hales is next. Thank you very much. I'm running for mayor because Portland needs a leader who can get difficult things done and who's ready for the job on day one. I am that leader, and you, I proved it to you when I was your city commissioner. Take care, Port Max. In fact, we can in part because I put a partnership together with others that got it done 10 years early and on budget and not only took thousands of cars off the road but created jobs in the process. Now we're in a room here tonight of true believers. We all support this agenda. I think one of the greatest strengths I bring to this effort is the ability to bring others along. And we need to do that. If you look at the issues ahead, to keep a tight urban growth boundary, to keep our strong natural resource regulations, to have a clean river, to build more green infrastructure, to keep our civic treasures great and in Forest Park's case to restore them, we have to get beyond words and to partnerships. That's what I've done all my life, built partnerships around these ideas, not only here but in the rest of the country. And I've done it through team leadership. You know, this isn't a job for a CEO, and it's not a legislative position. It requires team leadership, the ability to bring people together around an agenda and get the hard thing done in the city and the region, and to bring along with us a broad majority of people to a shared vision of a more sustainable future. I love that vision. I believe in it. I know I can work with all of you and all of Portland to make it even better in the years ahead. Jefferson Smith. I grew up about a mile from here. It has been a few years since I've spoken in this room. It's been about 21 since I spoke here the first time. I am running for mayor because it's my hometown and I want to make it better. And if I were in your seat instead of this seat, I would be evaluating this race along two dimensions, leadership and values. To make the briefest of leadership cases, I started a successful nonprofit here. I worked with 1,000 Friends of Oregon to start rebooting our commitment to land use planning as their lead speaker and listener on the Envision Oregon tour around the state. I was elected to the legislature here, a little bit east of here. 
where I serve now and I'm honored to do so, where I pitched to the governor the Cool Schools Plan to get us started retrofitting public schools, where I worked with Bob Jensen on an environmentally sustainable water plan for Eastern Oregon, which was far better than what irrigated agriculture was pushing. That took guts and brains, and we put together one of the best pieces of water legislation in the last 25 years in our state. But this race is also going to be about values. Because right now, if I were an environmental voter, I'd be thinking about how to get three votes on the city council. Because this city is going to elect a Democrat as its mayor, almost for sure, and probably for a while. But you need to be thinking about when the issues are joined, when occasionally trade-offs have to be made around maybe a highway boondoggle, about maybe exactly how clean or dirty a river will be, about exactly how much of our transportation we should be investing on a 1950s era plan versus a 21st century plan. And look to who's paying for our campaigns, look to who's within our campaigns, look to the hard choices we've already made, and we need to make sure we have a governing city council and a mayor that can both lead this city and also lead the values of this city. I'm Jefferson Smith, I'm running for mayor, and I think I can help. Thank you, candidates. Our second question, again, it's a one-minute response. Can you tell us about two environmental achievements that you would hope would be described as part of your legacy if you're elected once your term is up? We'll start this one with Charlie Hales. I think the two that stand out. That just doesn't want to stay up, does it? Is that working? Oh, yes. Sorry. Woo. Knock you out of the room. Um, I think the two that we will all be proudest of are two that I, I think are critical for us. One is, of course, to have a healthy river. After we responsibly and effectively deal with our Superfund mandate, make sure that polluters pay, that we go find the polluters that are not at the table yet, like Arkema and Roan Palenque, who made DDT uh, and Agent Orange here in Portland, kind of unbelievable, and the Department of Defense, which built Liberty ships and contributed to that pollution. Now there's where the money is. And uh, get that job done so that we have a clean river for fish and wildlife and people. The other is the restoration of Forest Park. And we have invasive species, we have trees that are all the same age, and the vision that uh, Olmstead and the Parks Board back in 1901 created for us is still there to be realized, but we have work to do and commitments to make to make Forest Park the treasure that it should be. Thank you. Jefferson Smith. I guess I would repeat the two that I said. I will only consider them legacy worthy, and I hope none of us considers too much our own legacy, but rather the legacy of the planet in which we live. But if Cool Schools does more than it's already done, then it's legacy worthy. If an integrated water strategy in our state actually pivots us from where we are making short-term trade-offs for short-term job benefits that are actually long-term sacrifices of our legacy, if we can pivot from a habit of maybe, let's say, giving Nestle a bunch of water that in 30 years will be worth gold, then that will be legacy worthy. More importantly, I would guess, and I'm proud of being one of only, I think, eight members of the legislature over the last two sessions to receive an A rating in both of those sessions. But I actually think the power analysis is the thing I'm most proud of, that actually figuring out that it is not a single leader that needs to be changed, but how we can get our people involved, how we can make sure that governing bodies have governing majorities that are public interest majorities, that are progressive majorities. The work we've done with the bus will probably have more impact on the environment than any bill. Eileen Brady. You know, I come from the perspective of the seventh generation defines a legacy. What will the seventh generation from now really get to experience and remember? Two that I would pick is the increase of our tree canopy. Our tree canopy can be at least 35%. That would be a goal in my mind. Secondly, green infrastructure, we can prove this city is ready to prove and create the model program for green infrastructure that, that should be looked at worldwide. So I look forward to putting both of those programs in place. I can't resist adding another one, which is that I want my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren to swim in the Willamette River and to enjoy themselves and for their parents to feel that they are safe. 
If you can do it in 60 seconds, we'll allow it. Our third question, and again, it's just one minute response. As you know, Portland's style of government is a commission style, and the leadership of the mayor and the city commissioners end up determining what the city is able to accomplish together. We want to know how you would describe your leadership style, and we'll begin with Jefferson Smith. At my best, I provide, I congeal, coalesce, and provide vision, and I collaborate well. I had to learn some of this not only by starting and running a nonprofit where most of the management we had to do was not only based on what we could require people to do, but what we had to ask for. And then by serving in the legislature, not only as a member, but elected and re-elected by my colleagues to House leadership, and having to learn in some measure how to work with and manage politicians and bureaucrats. And at my best, I listen very well, I process, I then offer a vision and I collaborate with others to figure out how to achieve it. Eileen Brady. Collaboration and accountability, that defines my leadership style. Portland voters have voted to keep this commission form of government. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. When it works, we have people like Commissioner Fritz, who was the other day at the City Club, was saying, you know, I like it because I can have full decision-making power with my bureau. I can get to know my staff. I can reach out to the citizens that are related to my bureau. That's when it's working. She also said in that same debate, but I, don't, I can't necessarily reach into any other bureaus, like a water bureau, and, and have true comments and that are going to have a real impact. So when it works, we have commissioners that take responsibility. What it requires is leadership to have commissioners take responsibility for their own bureaus, but also feel that they can, they're accountable for all bureaus. That's the type of leadership I bring, collaborative and focusing on holding each other accountable. I'll run a team that holds each other accountable. Charlie Hales. Yeah, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, you don't have to wonder if I can operate in our weird form of government, because I have. But I've also practiced that same kind of team leadership in the last 10 years in the private sector as I've worked with cities all over the country to follow our lead. I've been managing light rail and streetcar projects around the country in places as diverse as Tucson and Cincinnati and Providence. And to our credit, they're following Portland's leadership. But once again, the style of leadership that works in that environment is team leadership. In our council, we are five equals in terms of our vote. And then the mayor has a couple of particular powers, both to set the tone and to set the bureau assignments to other commissioners and to propose the budget. I've done that before, whether it was the parks bond measure or difficult legislative issues like prohibiting snout houses. Uh, I know how to operate in this form of government, but even more than that, we operate in a region. The mayor of the city of Portland has to build partnerships in the whole region in order to keep an urban growth boundary and make this a livable region, not just a livable city. Continuing in the same vein, candidates, uh, we alluded to this a bit, the mayor may not handle all the bureaus that have the potential to affect environmental quality in the city. Could you then be a little more specific about how you would lead and work with the council to be most effective for the environment? This time we begin with Eileen Brady. Well, as mayor, I'm going to take the bureaus that are related to public safety directly and economic development because Job development is my focus coming into this election. I think we have a myth here that says you can't have a livable city and a vibrant economy. And we actually have to break through that myth, commit to growing jobs. So as mayor, I'm going to take the police bureau, the emergency management, and the Bureau of Development Services, as well as be the liaison to PDC. How that relates to the environment, again, I come from a background of sustainability and holistic thinking. And we all know that each of these bureaus, in their own way, is contributing to safety in our neighborhoods, having a strong environmental capacity, and economic development. To me, they're not, they're not, they're just not siloed. So we have to set citywide priorities first, like the Portland plan does, for instance, and then set bureau budget secondly. So in my administration, we will be setting citywide priorities for the environment, and we will all be responsible for meeting them. Charlie Hales. I don't believe, by the way, that there's a myth that we can't be environmentally responsible and prosperous. We are. 
and we have been and we will be, and that's the Portland way. We have become a more prosperous city because people spend less on gasoline, a billion dollars less than the equivalent population in a city anywhere else in the United States. We are a more prosperous city because smart professional planners and engineers and scientists want to live here and build their careers in a green and livable city. So I don't buy that proposition. Um, now the way I will lead the council is we're going to have a very talented city council. We have a couple of members who are going to be there, Commissioner Saltzman and Commissioner Fish, who have strong environmental values, who understand the city and have some particular interests. We're going to have, most likely, uh, Commissioner Novick, and he's very talented and very schooled in environmental issues, and either way the other contested race goes, we're going to have a, c a council of four very, uh, very smart, very green commissioners. So how they get their bureau assignments will be based in part on what they're passionate about, and I'll listen to that. Jefferson Smith. The first is I'll set the tone. And that tone will have a few elements. It will include cost consciousness, not only to avoid things we can't afford financially, but avoid things we can't afford in terms of our collective wealth, and also an eye to the long term, that we not, even in a downward economy, find the temptation, or at least seize too eagerly the temptation for short-term trade-offs that are actually long-term expensive. In running the budget, we will show this same ethic. I serve on the budget committee that oversees the governor, secretary of state's office, and the treasurer's office. And in fact, the set of budget bills that go through there is a bit bigger than the set of bills that go through the city. And I have a good sense of what we might be able to do to set a tone around budgetary discipline and how you can use that as a lever to build collaboration. The third, I will say, because we'll run out of time, is a relationship. I'm honored to be the only member of this panel, or I guess any candidate for mayor endorsed by any member of the current city council, and I think we can leverage relationships to make sure we're singing off a similar sheet of music. Thanks, candidates. We're going to do the seventh inning stretch a little bit early this evening. Next up is the lightning round. If things go well, and the candidates can keep their answers lightning fast, we aim for five minutes of quick and informative questions. Uh, we are going to buzz through these. We prefer one, two, three, four, five word answers if you can. Timekeeper, you, uh, you ready to roll here? Okay, here we go. Uh, this first question will be Charlie Hales, Jefferson Smith, and Eileen Brady. Gut check, love it or hate it? How do you like the city's new composting program? I love it, but I think we need to explain it better and tune it for people whose lives don't quite fit the model. Jefferson Smith. Love it, show cost savings. Eileen Brady. Hate it. We should have phased it in and trusted people to phase it in versus make it mandatory. Question two, starting with Smith, moving to Brady, then to Hales. If you were the decision maker today on the Columbia River crossing, as it is currently proposed, no changes, no caveats, would you support it, yes or no? Jefferson Smith. No. Eileen Brady. It has to be skinnied down, period. And, and I, sub, I stand with the governor on this. We should proceed with Char this project. Charlie Hales. As is, I've said the same thing from the beginning, no. Question number three, starting with Brady, moving to Hales and then Smith. Would you support a carbon tax in Portland, yes or no? Eileen? Maybe yes. <laughs> Charlie Hales. In Portland alone, I'd prefer the region, but if we have to do it first to prove it, yes. Jefferson. Yeah, probably limited though. We'd have to test it. Question number four. Give us your environmental confession. The one thing you do that you know is bad for the environment. <laughs> Starting with Charlie Hales, moving to Jefferson Smith and then Eileen Brady. Charlie Hales, give us your guilty, guilty confession. Guilty confession. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm not picking among them. I'm trying to think of the worst. Um, um, <laughs> I guess I occasionally use um, non-organic stuff on my yard. For shame, sir. <laughs> Jefferson Smith. My wife would say I pass gas. Uh, would say what? I, no, nothing. Uh, I drive too much. <laughs> I drive. I drive a car to my commute largely by automobile. You see them parked outside occasionally. Candidate, candidate Brady. 
I, well, I always use organic things on my yard, so I, I can't do that. I have to say, um, drinking water from plastic bottles at events like this. This. Can not I, here. but not this not one here. today. Can like I this. see? Okay. Can like I see this. a quick uh, up twinkle for the an honesty of the candidates? Anyone? <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Fill in the blank. First Smith, then Brady, then Hales. Portland's next great vanguard environmental policy should be what? Jefferson Smith. Shifting the current expenditures of CRC to a more future-worthy project. Eileen Brady. Congestion tolling. World-class congestion tolling program. Charlie. Finishing the park system and the intertwine. Question six, since you were so forthcoming in the confession time, we will now ask you to name one positive change you've made in your personal habits over the past five years that helps the environment. We'll start with Brady, then to Hales, then to Smith. Eileen Brady. Having chickens in my backyard, does that count? Sure. Charlie Hales. Oh, personal change. Um, Nancy and I bike a lot more. Jefferson Smith. I ran for the legislature, worked my ass off for the environment. Beyond that, I started composting. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice job, candidates. We're, we're almost to the end of the lightning round. One last question. We'll start with Charlie Hales, then to Jefferson Smith, then to Eileen Brady. A new terminal on West Hayden Island? Yes or no, Charlie Hales? If there's, uh, I think the, do we have to do this as a lightning round? I'm sorry, I was going to get into a more reasoned answer. A new terminal, uh, only if there is a real balance between jobs and the environment and if there's not room for it in Vancouver. Didn't hear a yes or a no there. It's a good answer, though. I think you're going to... Okay, Jefferson it. Smith. It's a good answer. I mean, you can ask for a yes or no. I think it's a no if there is a plan to do it in Vancouver. If there is not, if all we've got is this and we absolutely need it, I'm open to it, and I know that's tough here, but I'll keep saying it. Eileen Brady. Yes, only if there is real community consensus around the nature-based um, recreation and restoration program that we're going to have that's going to be larger than the space dedicated to the terminal.